Good morning. This is a follow-up on my post about uh, demon possession and the woman that I met in San Francisco with a group of Googlers. And there was such a great response that literally hundreds of people within a couple of days uh, viewing it and then also text messages and the email from a family friend really wanting to know more about this. In fact, on Sunday, I had a lively conversation about this with my brother-in-law and so have really begun to go down this path of, of, of exploring this even further. And in fact, a friend of mine who has a blog post, uh, a blog called Biblical Viewpoint, um, ended up doing a, a post the same week about the same topic, which I'm going to link to here. Um, he's a great biblical scholar who, who puts things in a very uh, practical way, which I like. So all that to be said, I thought it was interesting that there was such a great response to a post about demons and demon possession and this spiritual um, world that that we that we live in that uh, and sometimes I feel like in the West it's not talked about as much or it's not as accepted as sort of reality as other places in the world where you know it's much more accepted that you know that there is a spirit realm that there is evil and possession and demons and things like that so I wanted to, to share another story just a brief uh, a brief one, but uh, an encounter that I had with another woman who I'm most certain was also uh, possessed. And it was about two years ago, a friend of mine was visiting in town, um, not a Christian. And anyway, we went downtown in Campbell, California, where I was living at the time, to grab a beer. And just to give my wife a break, she uh, had just given birth to Bowden, our firstborn. And so we snuck off to go grab a beer and give her a break. And just we're sitting at a uh, table on the main street in town outside on a real nice night. It was a kind of a quiet night. There wasn't a lot of, of folks out on the street. And just drinking our beer, we were. Um, chatting when a woman walked down the street was pulling a a little uh, luggage roller behind her but didn't when I first saw her didn't strike me as someone who might be you know homeless or a panhandler or anything of that sort and as she walked past us she stopped and even though we were on the other side of a a, uh, a sort of rail or um, a kind of fenced in little patio area she came up to the to the to the rail and sort of engaged us in conversation and she just started talking about you know where she was from up above San Francisco and then she started talking about different projects that she was working on and she mentioned some famous names like Bill Gates and it was really this sort of this conversation where she was kind of all over the place and I was kind of waiting for her to ask us for money or something, but she never did. And then she she just walked away. She left. And I remember I sat down and I talked to my I mentioned to my buddy that I was having a beer with. I said, you know, I don't know. This is strange, but I, I that woman, I feel like she was demon possessed. And this isn't something that, especially at that time, that I was. Um, you know that I was saying and yet I had this this sense that there was something very strange about the whole situation and long story short my uh, my buddy and I ended up talking a little bit about you know the fact that there is this spiritual realm and there are demons and you know if I believe in God and Jesus and the Bible then I, I have to believe in those things too and so we talked a little bit about it and I remember mentioning to him I said you know the name of Jesus is so powerful that I that if I would have said that, if I would have prayed around her, she wouldn't have been able to most likely handle it, you know. And then we just kind of moved on with our conversation, and and that was that. Until about a half an hour, when this woman returned, 
and she walked up and again came right to us and before she could say much I just said to her you know this sounds like a very difficult time for you there's some real challenges do you mind if I pray for you and she just kind of hesitated and I was feeling really I was feeling like I needed to be sort of proactive a bit here and my son my newborn uh, son was there in the stroller we had him he was sleeping I just I just didn't want this this presence around me and so I walked around the railing and I just asked her one more time I said can I pray for you and she didn't she didn't say anything to me and so I just kind of put my hand on her shoulder and I started to pray in the name of Jesus and as soon as I did she just kind of scampered off but only about 10 feet away to the other side of the sidewalk and then she just kind of started pacing back and forth and like under her breath was sort of muttering like something like I knew I should have left I knew I shouldn't have been here and it was like this this strange strange thing and then she just left altogether and I sat back down with my my buddy and you know as we finished up and, and paid our bill we talked more about this and he was sort of like you know what was that all about and you know again I I don't have all the answers with this but I I just said you know that that you know when someone is demon possessed what I know to be true is that they can't hear the name Jesus it's almost like tormenting to them and yet it it has all authority over them and so unless they want to be delivered okay unless the person who who is possessed really wants to, to to see the light and wants to be delivered then they have to to leave you know they have to to go away and so um that's it that's the story it was just another encounter that i've had with a with a woman who i i, I believe to be uh demon possessed there's been others um those, uh, this is probably the, the most direct, um, and it's something that I'm clearly having to understand more and, and deal with, and, and now I'm, I'm talking with, uh, with some friends and family about it. But just wanted to share this story as well, again, as we head into Halloween and, and folks are, are, are dressing up like, like demons and, and witches and ghosts and things. I think that, you know, the, the real concern or the real message that I have and what prompted me to, to, to write these things and post this is that, you know, I think a lot of times we sort of play around and, and, and you know, and don't realize that, that there is a, a dark spiritual realm as well that, um, that looks for subtle ways into people's lives, even through media or, um, or just even, you know, over time people's uh, words that are said to people I believe that, that, that this battle this spiritual battle for human beings it, it begins in the mind and so people start to, to see dark things and believe dark things to be true about themselves and uh, and it starts to, to allow a foot a foothold in into one's mind about about uh, you know about dark things and evil things and so I would really encourage you against that I would encourage you to um, to really consider if you're not already just reading scripture again I've just make myself available if people have questions about that you can certainly email me or contact me to uh, to just set up time to talk or pray together I'm glad to do that anytime all right so take care and uh, happy Halloween